hello friends. Today we're going to get super practical and uh, all of you have probably run into tube rattle at some point if you are a tube amp owner. So I'm going to send you kind of a, a fun hack for helping you find the tube rattle and, uh, and then eliminate it. Uh, so um, the only tools I used were this looper, which you can use any looper, and this pencil. Uh, you can use mechanical or wooden, but it just needs to have a, uh, a good eraser on there. And so I'm going to show you how to, you know, I use this looper to play an offending note that makes the rattle happen. And then I can get behind the amp and I can press against each tube with the, uh, the little eraser there. And uh, then I find it and then replace that tube. Enjoy. Well, hello, my friends. Today, we are dealing with a microphonic tube rattle. So this is, this started probably about a month ago on my old, this is my 1965 Deluxe Reverb. Uh, still pretty clean. I've had it for about a decade. I uh, have a good cover for it, and that's uh, really what helps it stay, stay nice looking. So anyway, regardless of how nice looking, uh, they, uh, you know, tubes wear out. So I was trying to figure out how can I get rid of that? Because no, normally when I do this, I try to have a friend with me who can play something and, uh, and get it to, to rattle and then try to figure out how to make it stop. Well, guess what? I've, I'm here by myself you know, at home and I uh, don't have any, uh, I'm not gonna have my son or someone do that. So then I remembered, what about a looper pedal? So. I played, I kept playing different things until I found the exact note that would really make it take off. And then I looped it. So here we're going to uh, turn up the old clone looper pedal, which I like to use for practicing and such, but it. So, you're hearing it uh, rattle, and uh, that's, that's enough. So we're gonna stop the video, and I'm going to uh, figure it out. I'm going to use a, uh, usually I like to use a pencil with a good eraser on it. Unfortunately, all I had was this uh, mechanical pencil, uh, but it does have a, enough of an eraser on it. So I'm going to uh, you know, tap on the tubes and press on the tubes and see which one, when I tap on it, it gets worse. And that's probably the one that needs to be replaced. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, guys. So I know you didn't get to see it, but basically what I did was while the sound was coming out of the amp, I, uh, you know, pulled off the covers carefully I, and uh, would press on the tube with the end of this pencil. Again, you know, we don't want to get shocked. Uh, and if you feel in any way uncomfortable with this, don't do it and take it to a tech. But, uh, you know, I was just trying to find where the rattle was coming from. And so especially you want to be careful uh, getting near the rectifier or the power tube because you will, you can get uh, really, uh, uh, those are really hot and you can get really shocked from them. But uh, yeah, so it ended up being, yeah, that rectifier tube all the way at the end. So this is not a, uh, a uh, you know an old one in fact I have some old tubes in it uh, in the preamp section but these are the electroharmonics tongue saw you know reissue tubes that are in there that I really like that unfortunately are hard to get right now uh, because of the whole uh, war and everything that's going on over there but uh, anyway so I'm gonna have to see what kind of rectifiers I've got lying around and I've got to uh, let that tube cool off before I uh, change it out. All right, we'll be back again. And we're back. And this is our culprit. So this is, a, this is the rectifier tube that's been in the amp for 10 years, uh, at least. I got, I got this amp back in 2010 and I took it to uh, Todd Sharp and he uh, retubed it, 
Now I have put some, some new power tubes in there and I've put some other preamp tubes in there that have gone microphonic, but, but the rectifier tube has been good. But you can see that it's got some, it's a little, uh, little discolored here, where probably from heat. And then when you, when you, you know, flick on it, it's not terrible, but you can hear some noise. Um, so then I look through my stash and unfortunately I do not have any NOS, so any nice American, Japanese or European made uh, GZ34 5AR4s. And so this looks to be the same tube. It doesn't say a Ruby on it, but uh, it has pretty much the exact same, uh, you know, looks to be the same base and markings. They look to be both, you know, made in China tubes when it was just under the uh, Ruby name. So it doesn't have that high pitched thing going on. So this is what I'm gonna try. Now I've had some guys say really bad things about Chinese uh, rectifier tubes and they can blow up and such. So I hope that's not the case. And if anyone, you know, out of the goodness of their heart wants to send me a nice uh, GZ34 5AR4, you know, just to uh, contact me and I'll give you my mailing address. But uh, this is what we're gonna put in there and let's let's see what happens. All right, now we've switched out the rectifier tube and now we're going to, we've got it plugged back in and we're gonna turn the old uh, uh, clone looper up with the horrible note. <laughs> still on there but it's certainly a lot better than it was so I'm gonna have to live with that for now and uh, probably have to look for another uh, rectifier tube so all right hope you learned something hope I did too well I hope you enjoyed the little the little hack uh, if you did please hit subscribe also if you've already subscribed and if you want to support the channel there are many ways, the best being Patreon, which there's a link down in the description. Also, you can find merch like this fine Amp Blueprint shirt at AskZach.com. Uh, also, there's good old tip jar information, and I appreciate you watching, and I hope you have a great week. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.